Sometimes great players can have some controversial moments on the football pitch. Let's take a look at five fantastic world stars who caused a bit of an uproar with some outrageous moments. Thierry Henry. All right, Thierry Henry was one of the greatest centre forwards to ever grace the Premier League. The Frenchman terrorised defenders the length and breadth of the country, is Arsenal's record goal scorer, and has won pretty much everything there is to win in football, even the supporter shield with New York Red Bulls. However, there was a time when he became public enemy number one for about four million Irishmen after pulling off his best Colin Cooper impression to hand pass the ball over to William Gallus to head in the knockout blow in a 2010 World Cup playoff that was minutes away from heading to penalties. Despite having robbed an entire country of tickets to South Africa, he probably sat himself down on the turf right next to Richard Dunn at the full-time whistle to offer him a shoulder to cry on. That's like a murderer turning up at a funeral to offer his condolences. I'm surprised Dunn didn't give him a fat lip. Henri probably didn't expect the witch hunt that came his way in the aftermath, labelled a cheat by all sections of the media, with the Republic desperately trying to claw their way back into contention, with the FAI even asking to be allowed in as an extra 33rd team. Bit embarrassing. Zinedine Zidane. No, France, I'm not picking on you, but we can't have a list full of world stars who did outrageous things without including Zinedine Zidane. A man who bowed out of football not by lifting the World Cup above his head, but instead by caving his skull into the chest of an Italian. Zidane, one of the great midfield architects, had almost single-handedly dragged France to that World Cup final 11 years ago, but with the game poised at one all and edging towards penalties, both of the goal scorers, Zidane and Marco Materazzi, became embroiled in a war of words. The former Everton defender thought he'd had the last laugh by degrading the Frenchman's mother and sister. Five seconds later, he was rolling on the turf and a red card was signalling the end of Zidane's career. But uh, I'd say he regrets it, does he? Oh, right. Cristiano Ronaldo. Let's stick with that World Cup for now and talk about another heated moment that had the media wetting themselves with excitement. Cristiano Ronaldo and Wayne Rooney were the wonder kids of Old Trafford, but suddenly found themselves at war when Portugal and England came head to head in the quarterfinals. Now, Rooney had basically been strapped up with sellotape and shoved back out onto the pitch after snapping his metarsal in April, so let's face it, he wasn't fit enough for that tournament. And he decided to show his frustration by attempting to castrate Ricardo Carvalho, planting his size tens into his private area. Ronaldo quickly popped into the scene, bouncing around like a flea, remonstrating with the referee to send off his Manchester United colleague, with Carvalho rolling on the floor wondering if he was ever going to have kids again. This earned Cristiano a very angry push from Rooney, but yeah, the red card was brandished. So, England were down to 10 men, Ronaldo winked to the bench, and everyone expected Rooney to beat five shades of pulp out of him when they reunited at Carrington in August. That didn't happen, but by God, if Ronaldo thought he'd been given abuse at away grounds before, good lord. Roy Keane. Where to start with Roy Keane? Undoubtedly one of the great midfield generals of the Premier League. It's a shame he decided the 2002 World Cup wasn't for him. We all know the story between Roy Keane and Alf Inch Halland, the man who he almost put in a wheelchair. It was more than just a case of a player leaving in a late tackle that left his opponent seeing stars. Think Ben Thatcher when he nearly killed Pedro Mendes. This was a story of vengeance. It began four years earlier when Keane snapped his cruciate ligament against Leeds, laying on the turf with nine months of rehab ahead of him. Halland stood over him shouting abuse for a supposedly feigning injury. Big mistake. In April 2001, the two faced off in the Manchester Derby, and Keane was obviously riled already, you know, it was a derby. The attack was about as subtle as stabbing someone with an axe on the London Underground. The ball was long gone, it wasn't even in the air, but the Irishman rose his studs and shattered the Norwegian's shins, red card. This is what Keane had to say. Even in the dressing room afterwards, I had no remorse. My attitude was, f*** him. What goes around comes around. He got his just rewards. He f***ed me over, and my attitude is, an eye for an eye. I'd waited long enough. I f***ing hit him hard. The ball was there, I think. Take that, you and don't ever stand over me again sneering about fake injuries. Good God, man, don't publish it in your damn book. That's like when OJ was acquitted and then released this monstrosity. He attempted to wash his hands of it and blamed the artistic license of his ghostwriter, Eamon Dunphy, who, as many Irishmen will know, can be fond of the old hyperbole. Ronaldo's performance tonight was a disgrace to football. This fellow, Ronaldo, is a cod. Keane was slapped with a five game ban from the FA, though, and a 150 grand fine. Luis Suarez. Jesus, which bite will we start with? Let's just touch on his most recent one. Considering it was the third time in his career Luis Suarez had been in trouble for snacking on a human being, and this was at a World Cup, when the Uruguayan was shown to have munched on Giorgio Chiellini's shoulder just a year after doing the same thing to Branislav Ivanovic, the world shook its collective head in bewilderment. He might have been arguably the best centre forward on the planet, but he was acting like a caged animal. It provoked the most dramatic World Cup subplot of the year, especially considering Suarez had been trying to engineer a move to Barcelona at the time, a club with a pristine image that would probably think twice about signing cannibals. Suarez was banned for nine international matches, slapped with a four month ban and fined £65,000. He got his move to Spain fairly handy, but the fact he couldn't make his debut until 25th of October in the El Clasico, well he only has himself to blame. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.